In this class, we're going to consider how you find the turning point of the graph of a quadratic function. So remember, quadratic functions make parabolic, like U-shaped graphs. And we're going to figure out how you find where those graphs change direction, which we call the, the turning point. So we're going to take a look at these examples in a moment, but just a quick recap um, and a bit of theory before we get there. So remember that a quadratic equation, uh, well, a quadratic function, first of all, is written as y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And these guys, depending on the a, b, and c values, will make different shapes and different locations of parabola graph. But your parabola graph is going to be somewhere on an x, y axis. So let's just say the graph comes down like this and then cuts through and goes back up here. So we know already that these points are the, are the roots. And if you're not familiar with the roots, or if you're not entirely familiar with the kind of introduction to quadratic functions and maybe check out those classes first and come back in here. This class kind of assumes a little bit of background knowledge and a bit of experience already. So we've got a quadratic function, it makes a parabolic graph and we can sketch that graph somewhere on an xy axis. In this class what we're considering is how to find this key point which is the, the turning point where the graph changes direction. Remember also that with parabolas and quadratic functions, you can get either a minimum turning point, which is where the parabola is sort of U-shaped. So we call that guy a minimum turning point. But you can also get inverted parabolas like this, where you would have a, a maximum turning point. Okay, so the, the method we're going to explore today for finding the turning point is good for both of these scenarios. So you don't need a different method for a minimum and a different method for a maximum. So one way we can go about this is simply to know what these two root points are. So let's say that root was at 2, so 2 like along the way, an x coordinate of 2. And then let's say that this guy here was at, say, 8. Well, parabolas are always symmetrical. You never get a parabola that goes something like that and then shooting off like, like that. They're always perfectly symmetrical U-shapes. So that means that this turning point lies right in the middle of your roots. So if you imagine a, a, like a line of symmetry down the middle, and lines of symmetry are an important concept in parabolas, and we'll chat about those in another class, this line of symmetry would go right through this turning point. So if that point's at 2 and that point is at 8, we could just figure out the x-coordinate of the turning point by finding the middle of 2 and 8. So finding the middle of the roots, basically. You can do that by adding the roots together and then dividing by 2. So 2 plus 8 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. So that tells us that this point here has got an x coordinate of 5. We would still need to find the y coordinate, um, but usually that's easy enough. You just take the x and you substitute it back into the equation to get the y. We'll deal with that when we get to the two examples. But in terms of the theory, that's really what we're looking at here. We're looking at the turning point being right down the middle of the parabola on that line of symmetry and that lies right in the middle of the roots. But the problem with that is what if you don't know the roots? What if you can't find the roots? What if you can't sketch a graph? Is there another way to find the turning point that kind of circumvents that? And, and there is a different way to do it and we'll chat about that when we come to the examples. So in the first example here I think we'll work it both ways. We'll use the roots to get the turning point and we'll use the other method and then in the other example, we'll show why sometimes finding the roots is going to be more difficult or maybe even impossible. Okay, so let's make a little space. Okay, so turning to this first example here, let's go ahead with the method I explained over here, which is finding the, the roots first of all. So finding the roots requires us to let the y be zero. So you can put in a little note in your working if you like. So let y equal zero for the, the roots. So if you're not familiar with that, then maybe check out the class that talks about finding the roots of quadratic functions first of all, or just follow along my argument here and then check that class later on. But basically to find the roots, we let y be zero because along the x-axis, which is kind of where the roots are, the y value, the up and down value is always zero. So we're putting a zero in here for y and that gives us a quadratic equation to solve to then get the roots. Factorizing that one as a trinomial, I'm just going to move the zero actually over to the other side. So factorizing that as a trinomial, we would get an x and an x and a 5 and a 1 and a plus and a minus. 
That allows us to then split these off into two little mini equations and we would end up getting x equals minus 5 from the first bracket and x equals positive 1 from the second bracket. So these are our two roots. So we could, we don't need really a graph for this, but we could go ahead and sketch a little graph here just to get kind of orientated. So we've got a root here at minus 5 and we've got a root at positive 1. I'm just going to extend my y-axis a wee bit. So the parabola is going to come down through there, it's going to turn on that turning point that we're trying to find and it's going to go back up through the other root. So just putting on the value, so this guy here was at minus 5, this guy's at positive 1. If we want to find the difference between them in the middle, add them together. So minus 5 plus 1 is minus 4, divided by 2 is minus 2. So that would tell us that our root here is at negative 2 for the x coordinate. To find the y coordinate, we just take that x and sub it back into the original equation. So let me just do that up here. So that's going to give us minus 2 squared, which is positive 4. 4 times minus 2 is minus 8, and then minus 5. Now note from, notice from the graph we're looking for a negative value because the y coordinate is negative for this point here. So 4 minus 8 is minus 4, minus 5 again is minus 9. So the y coordinate would be negative 9. Notice that, you know, this is a gap here of 6, and I'm saying that, that there's a gap of 9, so it's 9 down the way. That doesn't look quite right, but these are never quite drawn, you know, as a sketch, you know, to scale, because I didn't know this number before I drew my parabola. I could modify it and move that point down a little, but it's fine. It's just a sketch. It's just getting us roughly orientated as to how the graph goes. The important thing is we set out to find the turning point, and that's what we've achieved. So the turning point is minus two, minus nine. Let's take a different approach though. The second method is basically to rewrite this trinomial in completed square form. So that's just an algebraic process. So if you're not familiar with completing the square, then maybe either follow along or check out the class that discusses that technique, and then come back into this one. So we're just basically taking our trinomial, taking our quadratic, and we're going to rewrite it in a different form. Okay, so completing the square, I'm not going to really explain the details. I'm just going to assume that you either know how to do this or that you're going to figure it out as you go along. But in completed square form, this would be x plus 2 squared minus 4 minus 5. If you know what I'm doing, then great. If not, you can figure it out later on. So in completed square form, this trinomial becomes this here. So once you've put it in completed square form, all we do is we look basically at these two values, and these values form basically the turning point with the caveat that the one in the bracket you've got to change the sign on. So if it's a plus 2 in the bracket, you're going to make that a minus 2. So that becomes negative 2. The one outside becomes um, just, well, stays the same basically, minus 9. So minus 2, minus 9, the same as we got by the other method. This is a method we really want to focus on. Ideally, you should be fine with both methods. It would depend on the question, but this is the standard technique because it doesn't require you to do anything other than just this technique. It's only two or three lines of working, well, really only two lines of working and then interpretation. This guy's got a bit more going on. You might even feel the need to draw a sketch for this one. Um, not necessarily. You could stop at that point, but there's still a bit more work to do after that. This is a shorter method. I would recommend learning both. Definitely learn this one for sure, um, but probably spend a bit of time on this one as well. So that's basically how we do it. Those are the two methods. I'm just going to make some space here, and then we're going to work the other example. For the other example, we're just going to use the second method, the completing the square method, partly because if you look at this guy here, if we wanted to find the roots like we did over here, we're going to run into a problem because this is a trinomial, but it would not factorize into two brackets. And we need to factorize it to be able to solve, to get the roots, and then to interpret those, to get the middle, and then to get the turning point. We're not going to do that. We're just going to write it in completed square form. So in completed square form, we get x minus 3 squared minus 9 plus 4. And again, if you're not sure what I'm doing there, just figure it out later on by checking out the class on that topic. Um, and then this would simplify to x minus 3 all squared minus 5. And we just go ahead and interpret that to get the, the turning point. So 
trinomial format to completed square format, interpreting that to get the turning point, we're going to get positive 3 minus 5. So again, just changing the number in the bracket, leaving the number outside as it is. If we wanted to then take that and draw a quick sketch, we could mark that point just on an x, y axis. Should really put my little arrows on here. And then, so it's three along and then five down, so it's going to be somewhere there. And then just fill in your parabola shape, making it turn on that point. Remember that you determine whether the parabola is this shape with a minimum turning point or the other way with a maximum by whether this term, the x squared term, is positive or negative. Both of these were positive because there's no negative in front. That's why I know it's turning this way. If it was a negative x squared though, that could still be the turning point and we would still get it in the same way, but it would turn down the other way to make it a maximum turning point. So those are basically your two options for finding the, the turning point. Learn them both, probably spend more time focusing on this one. You need to know the completing the square technique for that. If you're not familiar with that, check that out first. For this one, you need to be able to factorise trinomials and solve quadratic equations. So although it's not a hugely difficult method, there are other techniques being pulled in there. So this is why it's important to build up all these algebra skills for when you get to a point like this where you have to actually use them. So make sure that makes sense to you. Once it does make sense, then try out a few practice questions.